people that drive through a neighborhood notice it and they probably know something a little bit about mm-hmm. us that we're not like stuffy people that hide in our houses. So when you first moved to the neighborhood, what were some things that stood out to you aesthetically? Well, when we even like <clears throat> came drove here with our realtor, she was like pointing out these turtles. I'm like, what are those turtles? <laughs> They're really weird. I thought they were weird because we don't have those in the suburbs where I grew up. And then now I love them. And we've only painted them maybe once or twice since we've been here, so they could probably use a touch up this summer. It's a community building initiative. Um, that actually was brought here from Portland. Oh, Portland. cool. They started it, and there was a group, um, and I believe it was, they, they brought it to the Hamlin Midway Coalition and sort of um, just said, hey, look at what we can do, you know, <laughs> look at what, what citizens can do and communities can, can do together. And so it's a thing that the city says, well, if you want to do this, Oh, then you just organize what, it. what there is to do, you know. Excellent. Um, and so, um, so we needed, like, our group of five, who were all people who live on this block here, um, we organized our project. Okay, so they're like independent enterprises, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we created a website that really um, is sort of self-sustaining and has a lot of instructions on it, so anybody can pick it up and print off a couple documents and figure out how to do this on their own. We needed to get um, approval or a, a signature from 80% of the people on each block surrounding. Uh, and was that any trouble? Did I no, imagine? no. Okay. And, you know, there were a few people who were against it. Really? There, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They prefer the austerity of pure payment. <laughs> well, there was one woman who was very concerned that if we have all these colors in the middle of the road, and what if someone, this is what she said to me, what, what if someone was, you know, intoxicated and walking down the street and stumbled in the middle of the street and fell, then a car coming along wouldn't be able to tell that person. Oh, yeah, no, that, that's a fairly legitimate concern, yeah. Um, it so, hasn't happened, FYI. <laughs> Why did you see it as important? Well, it was really less about, like, art to be art than it was more about a lasting, a lasting kind of impression or a lasting sign of a, a community building event. Um, okay. You know, throughout the process of organizing and coordinating it we met a lot of people a lot of people met each other um we worked together with people we'd never met before it was an i mean it was a lot it was a lot of work actually you're an artist right yeah do you think it's important to have art in public spaces yes yes that's the right answer is that how you really feel well that's not i wouldn't consider that technically art but it's just the people who want to be involved with the neighborhood are and i think it's another out not outlook, but another way to actually, it's just a different way to get them together and it works, you know. Hi, my name is Greg Pajari, aka Tubby Love, aka Kid Uko, and I've been living in the Midway since September of 2012. Have you noticed any of the, like, deliberate uh, artworks that are put up around public places? Nope, I'm not that guy. You want to ask about that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm not um, very artsy as far as vision goes. Oh, for sure. But you, you have you haven't caught the presence of any of those because obviously no, they're designed to be really. noticed by. I actually did call up Chris, and she's still around. She's still a working artist. And so Compass, um, she got a grant from Compass, and she was working with the neighborhood our district council, Hamilton Midway Coalition. And when she was working on this, this was a pizza place. So I love that idea, like she's painting this and she's smelling the pizza. So this is a picture that she found at the Historical Society and this picture was taken in Newell Park. This project is one that we did, um, I can't remember, maybe five years ago now. And this library is, you know, a library that the community loves, but this basement level was always kind of creepy. So this hallway used to just be white. Um, you know, it has like the exit signs and the like caution signs and whatnot. People would come down here for the bathroom or the auditorium, but it was just never very friendly. Um, so I worked with some students from Hamlin University and got paint donated. Um, and the students and some neighbors came up with this idea, with this theme. And they were also worked with the librarians. So you can see the theme of like information and knowledge and reading and CDs and music and all of that. Um, so it really was a way to make this area more friendly. Yes, my name is Kate Vermlin and I teach 
photography and community art at Concordia University. I see Mosaic on a Stick as a great space for the community to come together and just be themselves, to work on art projects in their own way, in their own space, in their own time. Um, it's also wonderful in the sense that they get to talk to each other and you meet people that you would never meet otherwise. And in many, in many ways, art therapy, working visually opens you up in ways that you don't even, would never even think and talk about feelings and ideas that wouldn't necessarily come up otherwise. This was a, a community project that the city helped fund that we also did with the uh, a, a local business, um, Mosaic on a Stick, that's just down the way. And um, over 300 community members helped make the different medallions and then the uh, artists and a couple other artists put them on the sides of these planters. The Mosaic Business and the community organization were interested in beautifying the avenue and thought, well, you know, this is a way to involve neighbors. So it's this big community effort and it really represents um, an a huge improvement because before it was just like empty planter, weedy, um, you know, not attractive, nothing that would slow you down, nothing you would notice. And then, you know, over the course of a year or two, it really changed. The only artwork I find that I like in the Midway, the only redeeming factor of the Midway is the graffiti that shows that there's realness to the area. There's actual individuals that live here. Do you the, know any taggers? Have I you ever tagged? No, some taggers, not myself. I'm more in the rap thing. Do they live That's in this neighborhood? Bag. Definitely not. This is not a very ghetto area. So not people are area. coming in from outside the neighborhood and tagging the place? Pretty much. People like come to parties at our house, come to party around the area, and they'll have their bags with them, and they'll go tag after they get drunk. Tagging in the community. Tagging. <laughs> 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 yeah, it happens, doesn't it? Uh, um, yeah, it's a problem. Um, a nuisance, as you just said. It, it is a nuisance. Get your paint off of our stuff. Oh. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, there, there are cultural and social things about tagging that I don't understand and that happen. Um, they're, they're sort of above my head, but um, I don't, I don't want it here. Let's say, for instance, hypothetically, like a renowned graffiti artist came into. Uh, the Hamlin Midway area uh -huh. and did like a, a beautiful composition but was not licensed by the owner of the property to do it. What would be your view on it? Not okay, in my opinion. I mean, it, you know, if you're a great artist, that's great. You've got a good talent. Share it. But don't do it without people's permission. I mean, that's somebody else's property. There is some good graffiti artists. Yeah. You know, I see it, but I don't like it, you know, because it, it, they have no respect for other people's property. They'll go right on people's property and then then the business owners and whatever have to go and uh, take care of it and get rid of it and everything. And so I don't like it. And, and from what I understand, and I'm not knowledgeable at all on a lot of it's gang related. I hear. Okay. And, but I don't know. I don't know any gang signs or what the, what it means. But I just know that that's what they they mark their territory. Okay or something like that. Another misconception of tagging is that some people see tagging and they think it's gang related. Certainly in this neighborhood it's very very rarely gang related and really across the city for the most part it's not gang related. It's usually young Caucasian males who tag, you know, and they're not in gangs. They're, you know, they live here, they live nearby or they go to school nearby. Graffiti is tricky, right? Graffiti is a bunch of different things. There's tagging, which is like literally somebody peeing on a tree, right? I mean, that's what tagging is. It's marking a spot. Um, there's that kind of graffiti all the way to what some people also call graffiti art or street art, which is something that's much more composed, generally takes a lot more time. The problem is, is when you have somebody who tags um, public or private property or they, where they don't have permission, basically. Um, and generally, it doesn't look particularly interesting or beautiful or curious or positive. I mean, it doesn't really spark discussion. I mean, it makes people angry, certainly, and it sparks discussion in that way, but I don't see it as something that really adds value to community. I grew up in an uh, environment that was sort of very colorful, and there are a lot of different 
different people and personalities and stuff going on. And so for me, part of it is seeking that kind of environment. But I think that, you know, there's the visual aspect that just makes life more colorful. And then there's the part of just people getting together to do things. It's yeah. this group of neighbors. Um, and again, if they go away, you know, yeah. um, so yep. it is, it's hard to keep the initiative going, the momentum. So there used to be um, more money from the city and when you had support of staff, neighbors mm -hmm. could, you know, get involved in a smaller Thankfully, way. Thankfully though, there are some things, I mean, it, it has been a lot of individual effort to make things happen in the neighborhood. There are a lot of us who live here and we're, we're, we're raising our families here and we want people to know that we care about the place and I think that when people drive through here, and they see this art and they, they see what we've done, then they know that these, this is a neighborhood that cares about their place and that, and that wants to see their neighborhood, you know, together and doing good things.